Today my guest is Raj Krishnan. Raj, how are you? Good. How are you, David? Doing well. Welcome back to the show. What is this is number three, I think, right? I think so, yeah. I've done yeah. two before. It's funny that I have to come all the way here to Rome, yes. even so though we both live in Chicago. That's, that's true. <laughs> um, what's been keeping you busy these days? A lot of things. You know, as you know, a lot of new technologies are being introduced. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, for it, so, so much to learn. Uh-huh. But even more importantly, we are able to give a lot of choices to our customers that are very specific to a workload. So mm-hmm. today I thought I'll talk to you about uh, one of the new products that I've been working with, uh, which you know one of my customers um, wanted to adopt this. And I thought that may be a good opportunity for me to share with you what are the scenarios and where uh, this yeah, solution can be used. So this is called Azure Data Explorer. Okay. Right? It's so That's not our, that new. Uh, it's a good, good yeah. uh, product name. Now, we used to call it Custo. I think ADX sounds a little better. Yeah, yes. I didn't know it was, it was called what? Custo. I didn't, I was before my time, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that the reason is, like, you know, one of the things that would we do is what we use internally, mm-hmm. we productize it. Right. Okay. So this is one such thing that Microsoft has been using for a long time. Okay. So you, you take an example like log analytics. Right. Right. And then some of you may be even using application insights. Mm-hmm. Right. And those are, and then the uh, security threat uh, uh, protection analysis. So, and if you look at all of them, there is one thing that's common. Very high volume of data being ingested mm-hmm. that needs to be queried in a relatively short time, not not very real time, okay. but almost real time, maybe mm-hmm. in the last five, 10 seconds or okay. uh, things. And then you want to get the data uh, out of that and use it for a lot of um, monitoring and making some decisions. Yeah, maybe uh, send an alert if it's outside of some certain bounds, for yeah, example. Exactly, and application insights is a great example. Yeah. Right? People are monitoring how many users are there, is my CPU uh, exceeding certain threshold, are, are people just being dropped, are certain systems are not responding in time. Mm-hmm. Those are all very, very critical decisions, and our log analytics is a great example. Okay. Right? We just monitor all of our server performances from multiple systems, and then we kind of combine them all together for a, for a customer where they're running 10 15 machines all grouped together and we want to get a, a, an alert that's going on. Hmm. So what this thing, what is unique about is that it is a very proprietary in-memory database ah. that takes all this ingestion and then lends itself for real-time query. That's interesting, in-memory database. So yes. if I'm doing log analytics, that is being pushed to disk somewhere. Yes. Are we reading it off the disk and storing it in memory, or are we capturing it before it gets written? It is in memory. It's okay. not in a reading in a disk because the kind of response that we get and the kind of caching that we do. So, and, and so what this is, you should also then you, you ask a good question. But what does this mean? Is this is not going to be uh, my ten years of data that are going to be stored? Okay. Right. It is probably a relatively short period of time. Hmm. We may push the older data and have new data come in, hmm. but. The data in itself does not lend very well into our relish, uh, relational database structure, or even NoSQL. Hmm. Or, or, you know, it's a, it needs a lot more quicker response. Hmm. And so, some of the things that it does is it's a, it's a columnar store okay. uh, and sharded across multiple. So several compute resources can get at it very quickly. Okay. And because it's a columnar index, it's very well, uh, it, uh, everything that you put in, it automatically indexes it mm. so that I can uh, run a query. Hey, I just want to know uh, what happened in the last 10 minutes where my compute response time is uh, uh, beyond a certain threshold. Mm. So it can, it can do all that because it's all in memory. Um, and it stores it, um, you can query it. One of the things is that it uses a very, um, a kind of a proprietary query language. It s- smells like and looks like uh, a SQL, but okay. not SQL. So we call it KQL, which is Custo Query Language. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's, and it, what it does is that um, you can actually build the query mm-hmm. uh, using it either right at, at the portal where the data is stored, mm-hmm. or there is an explorer, what we call a Custo Query Explorer. That's a rich client that you it's can download client. and install? Yeah, you do- download it. Okay. And once you download it, you connect to your data source, the All cluster right. where the data is, mm-hmm. and then you just run queries. Right. Now, even more interesting, we can now connect that to Power BI. 
Oh, and then output uh, display it. Display it and do all your uh, analysis, slicing and dicing. And this is a direct query because it's all cached. Mm. So it's not like I'm reading it from SQL and doing all this. I'm connecting to the Custo and the data itself is cached. So I'm not doing any queries. Mm. So the response is much better. And um, you know, you're, you're just, so you can also, um, you know, um, um, let's say, uh, create some pre-built um, Power BI uh, da uh, queries. I won't say Power BI queries, the Custo query. Okay. And then you connect Power BI to it, so it just uh, immediately displays uh, the data for you. So if you want to create a dashboard, a real-time dashboard. Real-time dashboard. So so you might ask, you know, there will be a lot of other real-time tools. Like uh, you may take things like uh, Stream Analytics, right? which is also... Uh, doing something similar. But the mm -hmm. difference is, instead of very real time, this one is what's done in the last 10 minutes. So if you look at application insights, mm -hmm. there is one aspect where we do real time live, but most of the time it is, hey, I just want to know what happened in the last five, 10 minutes. I see. Right. And so what we do is, at the Azure Data Explorer, we give you three ways to uh, ingest data. Mm -hmm. So one of them is using um, IoT Hub, Okay. or Event Hub, so any of the telemetry data can be ingested into Custo, okay. into Azure Data Explorer. And typically, IoT solutions involve lots of tiny transactions. Exactly, and all those things can be put in, and then one of the things you do is, unlike uh, data warehousing or anything, you don't, you don't try to design uh, anything, you just simply say, here is a um, Here's the raw bunch data. of data, raw data, and it indexes it, and then if you may get another lookup data, you just put it in and you do some joins and queries, mm -hmm. all done in memory so you can uh, retrieve the data. So there's some variable. setup, you have to understand what the schema is yes. in order to do the joins and to write your queries. Yeah, and, and what we do when we create it, for example, is we'll create a schema mm -hmm. uh, in the Custo to say that, okay, this is the, my schema. You said it will create one, does that mean I guide it to create that or it infers you need, it from you, the data? You need to create okay. it and just say, okay, this data that's coming from here fits the schema Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, uh, we can store it in a blob storage and then inject it into uh, Custo. Ooh. So you can either get it directly from Event Hub, uh -huh. or sometimes, like not all of them are telemetry data, but they're still coming in bunch of. Um, where, where do we find that? Is there a UI for defining that? Yes. Or is it so in the portal? it's in the portal. In the Azure portal. In the Azure portal. So if you go to uh, first thing you'll do is you'll create a cluster. Okay. And the size of the cluster depends on the amount of memory that you need and um, you know what the type of queries the mm -hmm. compute power that you need and then once you're there it asks you what are the data sources that then you can connect ah, oh i want okay. to connect to my event hub and then you provide all the connection strings for the event hub oh i mm -hmm. want to connect to telemetry then provide connection strings or i want to connect to a blob storage provide the connection strings mm -hmm. so i can just pump a bunch of data into blob storage it'll actually uh, put it in uh, in custo hmm. And so you keep pumping data, pumping data, and then you uh, run the queries once the data is there. Oh, I see. It's like 200 billion records, I can do a query in about 1.3 or 1.4 seconds. Because it's in memory, it it's doesn't have to read anything from disk. Yeah, and it does some, some joins, and uh, so if I get a bunch of different files with a different schema, mm. I can join them, and they're all indexed. Okay. So I can still do, it, like, you know, it's not like it has to be all in one stream of data. Mm -hmm. There could be some kind of a denormalization of the table type of structure mm -hmm. where I can join them and run some queries. Hmm. Are there any limitations to this tool? Well, it's um, you know in terms of data store, we have like we have a petabyte of data in a day that's being uh, pushed into it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the only thing I would say is there could be cost implications because it's an in-memory data. Okay. So you don't want to do like a SQL data warehouse where I have. Um, hundred, um, ten years of d data. You want to think yeah. about what you're querying that day. What querying data, and then after that, you may um, either remove it or put it in a blob storage. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read in and out of uh, Custo query, right? Take the data out and put it in a, for a data lake or something. Okay. But then you put the active data in the uh, Custo Explorer. We have like we, we have some variations of this. So the the log analytics, application insights. And there's something called Time Series uh, Insight, which is also a service, mm -hmm. but all of the underlying engine is Azure Data Explorer. So we used to leave a productized version of this, the Application Insights, as an example. Oh, okay. Uh, time Series Insights is another Application example. Insights under the hood is using it's Azure using, Data yes. Explorer? Yeah, okay. what, what we have done is we have further abstracted some of the things 
Like if you ever go to application insights, you can just go and say, hey, um, um, because they're all based on JavaScript from web pages like mobile applications, it'll tell you, hey, somebody came, I want to know when the, uh, somebody came to this page and then how many people came to the next page, mm. how did they close the data? Right. They have something called funnel. Mm. Now behind the scene, it's all custo query that mm. we have abstracted all this and then we have delivered a end product. But now sometimes when you need such real-time data, but it's not for application insights, but right. you need telemetry, that's when you go to the core of the product, which is the uh, Azure Data Explorer. Okay, so the uh, Azure Data Explorer, does it understand certain formats of data? That uh, Are there, there connectors to, let's say, blob storage, SQL Server, uh, IoT Hub data, I don't know. Yeah, so we, you know, as the data comes in, uh, we put it in the blob storage, okay. or it, I can read it straight from the event hub, or straight okay. from the IoT hub. So, uh, but we don't box, have understand. things like a SQL connector. But what we do in that case mm -hmm. is that we have Azure Data Factory, mm -hmm. which has got a ADX connector. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is, uh, actually as a matter of fact, one of the projects that I'm working with a customer is not necessarily telemetry data, but it is a forecasting data that's coming from multiple sources. Mm -hmm. And the reason they looked at ADX was they use SSIS, and it takes them 14 to 15 hours to process all this data, hmm. and then finally they uh, output some Excel files to people to consume. Okay. So one of the concerns that they had was that they're having more and more mergers and acquisitions. They think by the time they process the data for today, the next day's data will already be there. Right. <laughs> so it'll overlap. Oh. So what we so it's even though it's not a telemetry data, we took that use case and they say, okay. Don't do any transformations. Just make it into reasonable denormalized data mm -hmm. and put them, dump it directly, and we'll take care of indexing and mm -hmm. then run the query directly uh, on that. So when the data is not in the event hub or in a blob or um, uh, IoT hub, what we do is we use Azure uh, Data Factory to connect to that data source, mm -hmm. put it in the blob storage, okay. and then inject it. Uh, into okay, the so the easiest way to consume data is through blob storage. Yes, and uh, okay. or even hub, or IoT. Or that hub, okay. Yeah. So Any, th few. those three are native. As okay. soon as you go to the portal, when you say, I want to add data, it'll give you these three options. Is this something that, um, whenever I create a resource in Azure, I click that big green plus button that says, create resources. Is this how I get started with this? Exactly. And, and then, then you search Azure for Data Explorer. Azure Data Explorer, it's called, yeah. okay. And then it'll give you a size of the cluster that you need. Mm -hmm. And those that, those are the areas. It is, there is a cost associated with it because of uh, the in-memory and the real-time query. Uh, what's the factors in that? Is it the amount of data you're consuming? Or the yes, number of the queries size of or? the data and the compute that you need okay. if you're doing a lot of complex queries, you know, that uh, that could also have an impact. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and uh, is there uh, somewhere online people can learn more information? Absolutely. I think all you need to do is just go to Azure Data Explorer, mm -hmm. and there is a technical blog that tells you uh, what it is, and it explains to you how we're using it internally, um, and, uh, you know, the use cases could be anywhere you have data ingestion and you want to do real-time query. Very cool. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have on this topic? Oh no, I think you know what it's a. a we're I'm kind of excited because this was never uh, available to customers. Mm -hmm. We only had an abstraction of this, right. but now people can bring their own use cases, mm -hmm. and that's how you know I, got, I even I found this use case, mm -hmm. which is not a typical. Uh, a, yeah. But so anyone who needs real-time query and in-memory database can leverage this. All right, I like the fact that actually it's been used for a while internally, which means that we've we've Ooh. found a lot of the bugs, fixed the bugs ourselves and, yes. uh, uh, before releasing it to the public. Yeah. Uh, and you're speaking about it too, right? I think you're giving a yes, talk I on am. this. Yes, I am. I'll be doing this at VS Live. Uh, I'll be doing a session where I'll get, you know, one of the things we do, we use the GitHub, mm -hmm. we look at all the transaction using uh, Custo, mm -hmm. right? So I'll be kind of demoing how huge data sets can be uh, pulled and some uh, details on the custo query language, uh, how you can use it, um, even simulating some telemetry data mm -hmm. and injecting into custo. So those are the kind of things that I'll be discussing uh, at the session. Excellent. Raj, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Always a pleasure. You know, one of the things that I find it very exciting is that I you know, go to a lot of conferences 
um, and even with people from other companies, maybe AWS and Google. But one thing I find is that we're all excited about technology, and it has allowed me to connect with many people, uh, you know, make new friends, and uh, uh, David is a great example. I think every time we meet each other, uh, we kind of talk about something new. Hey, do you have anything to share with the community? So it's a, it, t discussing about these things is not only just about technology, but it's about connecting with people, making friends, and sharing that we're all very passionate about.